Yeah. We've got we've got the whole we've got yeah. Stuart from the yeah. Hive speaking later. Yeah. We're all we've used got so. Hive. Um, we've got um, opportunities for community questions later. I think that'd be really valuable. I also definitely resent being yeah. being not considered young anymore. This is, <laughs> this is quite, quite sorry, devastating. Sorry, I'm sorry, it's Phil. I've been no And Phil, well. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you. And, and, and thank you to, to Rachel thank and her team. I think doing a great job. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we are going to move on to item number five, which is community representatives update. I believe we have one community representative. Thank you, as usual, I'm you the only one, I think. Um, yeah, uh, following on exactly from what Matthew has said, uh, four years ago, I think it was, we were given a grant when we decided that we needed a central point for all our community groups to meet together. And we formed Hoylake Help and we had a shop for, well, we met, the first year was funded by you, the second year we got funding from other people, we kept it going and eventually we had to give up we, because we couldn't afford the rent anymore. Um, and we now run it in Melrose Hall in the office there and we kept the work going. Um, and each year we have invited the community groups to meet together. We don't want to join together. We don't want an umbrella group because each group has its own particular interest. And that's the way we are forward. But we've recently just put this together and it is draft and anybody who wants one can have one afterwards because we are eventually going to get it printed properly but we have 45 different groups of people in Hoylake from the roundabout to Mel's station Hoylake and Mel's and each of those groups over the years have been formed because the residents have decided something needed doing um, and we had a meeting a fortnight ago, uh, 22 of those community groups came and gave us a flavour of each of their groups and what they do. And I have to tell you that the thing that has really made the residents of Hoylake at and Mel's absolutely furious is the fact that we are now going to have parking metres on our promenade, which is discriminating against the older people who enjoy driving down to the prom and they're not going to pay their one pound or their two pound. The people who go bowling are going to have to pay. The people who go to the community centre are going to have to pay. The people who go to the lifeboat station, the boating lake, they're all really, really annoyed that we have volunteered and Hoylake and Mel's this particular Christmas we raised in the village from the residents and the businesses over £30,000 and I think everybody will say that we had the most fantastic display of lights and they are going to move this year because Mel's now are joining in with us so it will be even better uh, and that we just feel that what you have done as a council in putting parking meters there is just discriminating and really not helping the people that you should be helping. Uh, we noticed and we've heard that when it's happened in the parks, the parks are not getting the people anymore. So I don't know what you're going to do about it, but we are really very, very upset about the whole thing. People came from all over Wirral. We were told to regenerate the area. If you, we have over a hundred businesses on Market Street in Hoylake. It's one of the biggest lengths of, or the longest lengths of shops. And we rarely have more than two or three empty. This week, there are four new businesses opening up in shops where businesses have retired or for one reason moved on. And this is something that we should be looking at. We are a tourist peninsula. And people are not going to come if they're gonna to have to pay. So I hope that you will take this away. And one of the things that I think came out, and this is being a bit political, where at the meeting last week, it was pointed out that the money you're going to raise from this could be raised by doing away with the Wirral view, which the people of Hoylake feel. Hoylake and Mel's feel you are peddling politics on our rates. Yeah. 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 Wendy, I think it'd be, it'd be pertinent to respond to that. Um, yeah. to, give, to give some. I'll give you a brief. That's very kind of you. Um, 
So, so there are sort of two component parts in terms of the politics of that, uh, Jackie. Um, I think I think the stuff the community groups do um, and have done, and I think have made a real success of, I applaud and all day long. I think the work you've all done is brilliant, um, and I, I thank you for that. The two the two bits that you mentioned about the um, car parking meters and about rural view, um, just quickly to come back on um, the car parking uh, specifically. Again, not to be party political, but the council has lost hundreds of millions of pounds of its funding from central government, and is unable to. Um, no. No. That, is, that is finding it very difficult, therefore, to fund certain services that it funded before. At the same time, the funding pressures are increased on the basis that, and this is something happening right across the country, not just specific to Wirral, at the same time, funding pressures are increased because we have more children in care than we had before, and we've got lots of pressures right across. I, mean, I think we've seen that Northamptonshire County Council, um, I think that's correct, are, are now um, having the government come in because they haven't got enough money to fund their services. So I don't think that um, the council having to find measures to to fund services is is something that can be laid at the door of the uh, council. Regarding World View, the publication that goes out from the council, it actually um, spends less money than it previously spent communicating with people. And the big concern we yeah, had gets it. the big concern we had is when we conducted a worldwide um, survey, we found it was the people in the poorest parts of the borough that felt least well informed about the things that were happening in the area. And for me, the reason that's particularly bad is the things like the community support networks, the food banks, I need people right across the world knowing that that's, that support and help is available to them. And the existing media that we had that we would advertise in didn't actually reach many of those areas. And so, and, so, and so let me just finish, Jackie, Jackie, let me just finish. I know that there are issues in terms of the distribution and we are looking at them. I, as I would always say anywhere, if anybody has a, a good idea as to how we can get that delivered even uh, with improved rates, I'm all willing to meet with them and to listen to them. But I don't think the answer is to spend more money and reach fewer people. Thank you. There are other suggestions made. But <laughs> that, yeah. um, so we're going to move on to item six and we're going to have a presentation from the hive. Is it Stuart? Thank you. Two. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm not going to touch it because I will break. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, good evening and thank you very much for the invitation to come and talk to you briefly about the Hive We're on Youth Zone. Um, there's a couple of pictures there you can see. The Hive is a, a significant investment in young people in Wirral. Um, we've not quite been open a year yet, um, but it's a, a state-of-the-art iconic building with a whole range of different activities and support uh, for young people. Um, we operate as an independent charity. Um, I'll go on to the next one. Yeah. We operate as an independent charity, but we are part of a network of youth zones that are growing around the country. Um, which is part of a, a, an umbrella charity, if you want, called Onside Youth Zones, which was founded in 2008. And it was founded to replicate the successful model of um, Bolton Lads and Girls Club. This is a youth club that's been around for over 125 years, and for most of its life it was what you might imagine of a typical youth club with a leaking roof, a pool table with three legs, um, and not much more. Uh, back in the late 90s, their building was burnt down and their committee sat around and said, if we were going to build the best youth club in the country, what would it look like? And they came up with this idea and it was going to cost the best part of five or six million to build and it was going to have all sorts of facilities. Um, so they did it. And they, they took the heels in and they raised the money and they did it. And over the following years, lots of people came to visit from all over the country and said, oh, we wish we had one of these in our borough. But nobody actually went away and did it. Um, so the then chairman 
um, set up the charity called Onside, which purely has the um, charitable objective of creating these state-of-the-art projects for young people, of engaging strategically with local authorities, with private sector champions. Um, Onside raises the capital funds, leads on the design and the build, um, and then at the point that the building is completed, that is handed over to um, a locally led charity. So we're all used so much part of that network. We are an independent local charity with local leadership, um, very strong private sector led government governance, um, although representation from uh, local authority, from children's services, from fire, um, lots of different agencies. Wirral is the eighth of these youth zones to open. Um, but Onside has a, um, a real ambitious vision uh, to have 20 live projects by 2020 and 100 by 2030. Um, and he's on target for that. Another one will open in Chorley in a couple of months' time, and next year five will open, and the charity will go national, uh, which is where I introduced my colleague Tony. Um, Tony has recently been appointed as the Chief Executive of the upcoming Youth Zone in Croydon, one of three uh, that will open in London next year. Um, we've been open less than a year and the Wirral project is viewed as the uh, flagship model. Um, so all the new London Chief Execs are coming up to learn from Wirral and they're up here. So Tony is up here for six months um, learning what we do in Wirral and then replicating that in London. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to hand over to Tony, he's going to tell you a little bit more about what the youth zone is, the model, what we do, and then I'll come back with some of the little bit more that's uh, specific to us tonight. So Stuart's right, I'm, I'm an Essex boy living in Birkenhead, in way, so uh, I'm up here till the summer, and uh, very nice it is too. So what I want to do just very briefly is just go over what we call the youth zone offer. Broadly, the on-site mission and our mission is to provide somewhere to go, something to do, and someone to talk to um, for children and young people aged eight upwards, and for those who are 25, if you have additional needs. Um, we're really proud that since 8th of April last year at the Hive, we have maintained every week 46 hours of open access, universal youth provision. That's seven days a week, and that's been every week of the year since we opened last April. How that works, as the slide says here, as, as it says, 20 activities each night, buildings that create involvement with children and young people, sports, arts, personal development, there's a climbing wall, there's a boxing ring, there's a music studio, um, the list just goes on, there's a rooftop football pitch, there's a Fort Badminton Court Sports Hall, there's so much to do. Um, we have uh, a really, uh, really effective employment and enterprise programme. Uh, we have uh, an approach called Try Train Team, which essentially is we give young people the opportunity to try something new for the first time. We then encourage them to train towards that, and then we encourage them to form teams. And over the past year, we have formed uh, girls football teams, uh, lads football teams, netball teams. It just goes on. Tonight, uh, the lads are playing um, a kebab shop, I believe, as part of a local league group. Um, but these are young people that you know, since I've been up at the Hive, I've looked at it and I thought, what were you doing over 18 months ago? If you weren't here, well, where were you? And they're now playing football as part of a team. Um, we're inclusive, and we're really proud of that. Every Sunday we have what's called Hiveability, and that is our inclusion sessions for young people up to the age of 25 who may have additional needs. And we regularly receive over 100 uh, young people coming uh, to enjoy our facilities. Um, as the years progress, young people will increasingly call it their second home um, and we're really passionate about raising <coughs> aspirations and developing the leaders of tomorrow. Who's going to the next slide? <coughs> um, a youth zone is a place that is safe for young people, it's inspiring, it's quality provision. Um, as I said earlier, we work with those aged 8 to 19, up to 25. Um, the model is quite simple, it's just 50 pence per visit, £5 a year annual membership. Um, at the moment, whilst I'm living up here in Birkenhead, I'm using the gym in the morning at the youth zone. It's David Lloyd quality equipment, and I'm, yeah, I'm able to use that, and so are young people, for 50 pence. It's a, just a total no-brainer. 
and uh, we're open when schools are closed. Uh, so we, our sessions start at four o'clock uh, in the in the afternoon, and we close at ten. We run sessions throughout the weekend as well. Just briefly, some impact um, from young people. Um, you know, we did, we deliver uh, holiday clubs, so during the uh, half term and summer holidays for just ten pounds, um, your child can come to the hive from eight o'clock in the morning till six in the evening, and they'll get breakfast and lunch, and they'll be able to take part in all of the activities and use the facilities that we have. And just as a kind of anecdotal. Um, you know, story a couple of weeks back, a young lady who we've been working with, she was moving away from the area over to Doncaster. She'd um, been brought up through the care system, and at quarter past ten every evening, the staff have a debrief just to reflect on the session, what worked well, what didn't work well. And she came in and she thanked every single mom, one of the members of the staff and said that you've changed my life and it saved her <coughs> from uh, many horrible things. And in the five or six weeks that I've been there, that just justified why I joined the organisation. So that's that's the change that we're making, that's the impact that we're making. <coughs> Next slide, Stuart. <coughs> Raising aspirations, uh, we're really determined to do that. I'm really passionate about that. We know through various social studies that young people who grow up in challenging environments where they're facing um, deprivation and uh, significant barriers, aspirations for them are they're not high enough, they need to be higher. And we're trying to do that at the height. We're trying to raise the aspirations and we're trying to help young people realise their dreams. We have a young person's development group. So everything we do at the height is informed by young people. Rewind, what, two and a half years, three years, Stuart, the young person's development group would have been formed. And that's and that, those young people informed the look of the hive, the branding, the logos, the activity, and they're still at the heart of the hive today, uh, informing uh, all that we do. So that's, that's the last of my slide. You can tell somebody else did that bit of the presentation for me, I can't be doing with all those things separately. Anyway, the Wirral Youth Zone, um, already we have over 7,000 members from young people across Wirral, which does indicate there was a, a demand for, for what we're doing, um, and 80,000 visits from young people. Um, We've created 75 permanent jobs, uh, some full-time, some sessional, although none on zero hours contracts, I'll add. Um, and we've recruited over 100 volunteers. Um, so far, we have had over 11,500 hours of uh, volunteering given to the project, um, which equates to a value of you know, well over £100,000 worth of time. Um, and over time, we believe that the youth zone will have a significant impact on antisocial behaviour, and indeed we're already seeing that. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, myself and a colleague from the um, local police were invited to a home office strategy group to talk about the rural youth zone, which has already been seen as an example of best practice on creating an impact. Um, so we were invited to the, the home office to present on that. Um, and you know we've already got reductions of antisocial behaviour in the area over 25% and that's looking to increase further as we go forward. Um, very much hope working to improve perceptions of young people in the community. Yeah we've got loads of recreational activities, young people can have fun and a good time and that's really important but also we're involving young people in giving back as well. Um, I'll come on to a, a little bit of that on the next slide. Um, and employability and enterprise is a key part of our work as well. Enterprise is a culture within the youth zone. Uh, we offer uh, bespoke employability programmes working with local companies. We are already seeing over um, two thirds of the young people who've gone through those programmes uh, into work and further education. Uh, we're working with young enterprise um, and developing those skills in a fun and enjoyable way amongst young people. The, the youth zone is about the long term, it's about a journey, it's about preparing young people to achieve their best and reach their potential at adulthood, but it isn't a, a three-week intervention, it's a journey over, over a long time. 
As we touched on, young people are absolutely at the heart. We mentioned the Young People's Development Group. They were part of the design of the project, the branding. They sat on the panel that appointed the architects. They rejected some of the uh, first design. Um, they came up with the name. Uh, their views and opinions have been sought throughout in, many, in various different ways. Uh, they're part of the recruitment process for all of the staff. Uh, in the kind of four month period between about uh, October and January, just over a year ago, young people sat on 600 interview panels um, and really took that to heart that it was their youth so and that their, you know, it wasn't a tokenistic involvement at all. Um, you know, they actually influenced quite strongly some of the uh, appointments that we made and some that we didn't. I remember one candidate and the young people said to me afterwards, Stuart, we like you, respect you, but if you appoint that person, we all quit. Um, and, the, the, uh, and they really developed, they started with some standard questions, but as they got into it, they were asking supplementary questions. They were really uh, delving quite deeply. Uh, ongoing consultation and input. We have a young leaders program already. Over 50 young people have been through that uh, eight week training program. And they're now involved in leading, uh, senior young people involved in leading on junior sessions, on supporting their peers on the inclusion session, volunteering in different ways and linking them into volunteering on other community projects as well. And really kind of embedding that uh, ethos within young people of contributing to their community uh, in various different ways. Um, we have different groups of young people as well that meet regularly and advise us on uh, the programme content and all sorts of other aspects of the life of the youth zone. Yeah. Particularly relevant to, to, uh, to yourselves here, we are, we are the Wirral Youth Zone. Although we're located in Birkenhead, we are not the Birkenhead Youth Zone. It is a Wirral Rockwide project. Um, you know, unsurprisingly, we have a higher number of members who live closer. Um, but we work really hard to ensure that the youth zone is communicated and uh, available for young people right across the Wirral. So initially, we had a target of 3,000 members, which was based on the performance of the other youth zones in the network. Um, as I mentioned, we have over 7,000. That has, you know, we've massively overachieved there. It's a very busy project. Um, but we decided that we would, you know, split our target as well. So, you know, we didn't, if we just got 3,000 members from those who live very locally and could walk or those whose parents brought them, that to us is not achieving our target. So we've been very proactive in doing as much as we can um, to promote the project. So within Wirral West constituency, our target was 601 members, and this was based on percentage of population of young people in each area. So in the constituency as a whole, we, we do have 747 members, so we've achieved that target. Breaking that down by wards, we're not quite there yet in all, all the wards, and we've got some more work to do. And we have actually got some more money approved in our budget from the 1st of April to uh, increase our outreach team, which is currently one person. Uh, he is currently working in a number of schools in this area um, and we're doing some, starting to do some taster sessions um, to engage more young people. Um, so, you know, any help you can give us in promoting the projects, encouraging young people to get involved, um, that would be great. Happy to work with any other community groups. So where are we going from here? We're nearly at our first year. It's been something of a, a roller coaster. Um, the numbers that we've uh, been working with have far exceeded expectation and what was budgeted for. Um, so a, a lot of team members have been working very, very hard. Um, but what we don't want to do at any point is rest on our laurels and say, job done. We recognise that actually we've got so much more to do. Um, so going ahead into the next year, the first thing is about quality of our work and uh, ensuring that it actually has an impact. Um, we've talked about return on investment already tonight, so I'm not going to bring that into it. 
But you know, one of the things we will be doing quite a lot of in this next year is evaluation of our work. Um, and a major piece of evaluation will start very soon at the end of our first year so that we can learn from that and ensure that what we're doing actually makes a difference. Um, and we will be looking at those return on investments. Some of those uh, exercises have been done across the other youth zones in the network, but we're going to do that specifically for Wirral as well. And we're really working on being the best at what we do before getting any bigger. Uh, we're not looking to, to grow in any unsustainable way and start lots of new pieces of work that can't be sustained long term. Um, you know, the project, we want to be here for a long time. You know, the intention is that the youth zone will be operating long after I've stopped working. Um, so yeah, outreach will form a major part of our work in the coming year. We've talked about geography, ensuring that young people from right across Wirral are able to access the project and take part. Um, but also in terms of diversity as well and ensuring that our membership is representative of children with disabilities, looked after children, etc. Um, really making sure that we, we meet the needs of all young people. Um, and the really big one, is part, the big one is partnership and collaboration. Um, our specialism is generalism. And the only way that we will see young people achieve the best outcomes is if we're working in partnership with lots of different organisations. Uh, we've already got partnership agreements with about 40 different organisations, schools, other um, voluntary sector organisations, statutory um, services. Um, and we want to do more and more of that. Um, you know, I've put down there that we're looking to address fears. Um, you know, before we were open, there were a number of fears uh, around the area that we were coming in as quite a large charity and what we were doing would have a detrimental effect on smaller groups in the area. Um, and the reality is, the, is, is the, the opposite to that. And our intention is to work with as many groups as we possibly can, uh, be they small local groups who might uh, be able to use some of our activities or refer some of young people to things, but also where we would learn a lot from them as well. Um, different specialist services, we're not there to provide that. Um, and actually by working together, we can become even stronger. So we've worked with a number of organisations on joint bids already, uh, joint activities, and that's starting to build up. Um, and we're very keen to work with even more groups for the, in the best interests of young people. Um, additionality, the youth zone is very much, as well as not instead of all the excellent work that was already going on in Wirral. Um, there are over 45,000, I think, young people in our age range. You know, we're working with 7,000 of them, that still leaves over 38,000. Um, you know, so it's very much about additionality, not about instead of. Um, really looking to learn from other groups, other organisations, other local people, so that we can improve what we're doing. I think I've already mentioned their joint, joint projects very much the direction we want to go in. Um, and sustainability, a big issue. We don't want to be here one day and not the next. Um, so we are doing a lot of work to ensure that we maintain what we started with young people. And it's very much, I guess in summary, a four-way partnership enables us to do what we do. Um, young people is one part. Um, the private sector played a huge part in supporting the youth zone, both in terms of financial support and a lot of other engagement. The local authority are um, you know, our biggest partner, and without the local authority, we would not be anywhere near where we are. Um, and the community as well, working with other groups, volunteers we've talked of. Um, you know, each part on its own isn't sufficient. It's all about working together. Um, and I guess that's about us um, in a nutshell. Um, very happy to show people around the project if people ever want it and very happy to take any questions.
20 questions from the committee, Councillor Elderton. Yeah, um, thank you very much for that comprehensive uh, report. I've really got two comments, really, based on where I started this evening on antisocial behaviour. I do notice that West Kirby and Thurterson probably has the lowest take-up of people able, as members, you've got a target of 113, 64 members, which is only 57% of what is possible. My question really is, um, can you do anything to outreach into that area a bit harder, if you like? And the second thing really, which I suppose is, is fairly obvious, is the cost of travel from West Kirby and Thurston and Wirral West to Birkenhead, acting as an inhibiting factor in preventing young people coming and joining you? I'll answer the first question. I'll let Tony answer the second because he's been focusing on travel. Um, yes, we can increase our outreach. Um, outreach wasn't part of the initial opening budget. Um, but I managed to kind of like tweak a little bit and get a bit of money from somewhere else. So we have had one member of staff whose role has been outreach. So he's been working in um, schools, in other community groups, etc, etc. Um, and we have been moving around the constituencies rather than a day here and a day there. We've kind of done two months in one area of work and then moved on to an X so it was kind of meaningful and followed on. Um, so we are actually working in West Wirral at the moment. West Wirral at the moment. Um, our budget for 2018 starting on the 1st of April was approved last week and recognising that we still have a way to go um, geographically not masses, compared to the others in the network, we're doing really well at geographic spread, but there's still a way to go. Uh, anecdotally, we're there in terms of disability, etc., but we haven't actually drilled down to look at that in great detail. Um, so it is a priority, um, and we did get um, additional allocation of funding to outreach, so we have gone out to advert for two additional outreach workers, so that will be stepping up soon. And really pleased about that. Travel is an issue. Oh. So in the past six weeks or so I've been up here, I've been trying to get my head around the travel operating landscape here. Coming from London, Essex, transport from London, run the show in London, up here it's a bit more complicated. So I've been having conversations with um, Mersey Travel uh, and I'm meeting soon with Stagecoach because it's clear there's a role here for travel operators to support us in getting young people down to the hive. Um, yeah, I drove over this evening from the Hive to here for the first time and yeah, it's a bit of a trek, isn't it, really? So, we know that young people want to take public transport, but the question is, is it affordable? And, you know, the earliest conversations I've had with um, Mersey Travel and what I will do with other travel operators is around concessions, is around, um, you know, for example, can they give us a bus? Or can we do, like, across the rest of the on-site network in some new zones, where they have their own bus, they can go out around the area and collect young people, um, yeah, that would be an amazing situation for us to have. So that's the that's the sort of objectives that we have over the next year. Um, but clearly, you know, we need some travel operators to step up to the mark for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th there are three other members who'd like to ask a question before we move on, please. Um, David Burgess, yeah, thank you. Um, it, it's a very impressive operation, and I have to say I'm a, a great believer in meritocracy. So I can understand why the the, the operation was built where it where it is. I'm just a bit concerned that, you know, I joined a gym in January and by the 1st of February I stopped going. Um, that does happen regularly, unfortunately, but um, I, I'm wondering out of those statistics that you have on that slide for Little West uh, residents, just how many of them are continuing to go. They might have paid their five pounds for the annual fee and excitement that uh, you might have lured them in and it's, it's a very impressive operation. But I'm just curious as to know, after a year, are we going to see those figures drop dramatically? Because everybody in this room is paying for that operation. Um, I think we will see those figures drop to some extent. Um, it's human nature. Um, lots of us will have joined gyms and then stop going. And lots of us commit to some things and then stop going for lots of reasons. Um, so. We do expect it to level out, it's a little bit lower than it currently is. Um, looking at the, the journey that the other youth zones have been on in the network. Um, however, we have also invested in, in somebody who's focusing particularly on retention and engagement. Um, 
and we're going through a process of actually personally ringing those who haven't been for a while, looking at the reasons for that. Um, there's lots of different reasons and that's where this outreach comes in. You know, it's going to be a lot of proactive work. Um, some of the reasons are victims of our own success. In the first three or four weeks of opening, the number of visits was excessive um, to the point that at some points we had to turn people away for going over the numbers for fire regulation. Uh, but actually what we found was that in those first few weeks we were somewhere to, to go, but we weren't always something to do and we very definitely weren't someone to talk to because the numbers were actually too high. Um, you know, we've been very, very um, passionate about fundraising and trying to increase our funding and increase our staffing levels and uh, in volunteer recruitment so that we can give a, a good quality experience to more young people. Uh, but as we make those phone calls, one of the most common reasons for not coming has been, last time I came there were too many young people there for me to be able to do all the things I wanted to do. Uh, so that is one of the issues. There was another issue with antisocial behaviour in the first couple of weeks outside of the building and as is, you know, again human nature, many young people will push the boundaries to see how far they can go. Um, and we had some of that going on. It was dealt with very quickly. We'd got a strategy agreed pre-opening with the police. It was all put in place and dealt with very quickly. But again, some people didn't perhaps have the best experience in the first week or two. So yes, I do expect um, it will lower, lower, but I think then it will come back and we will work towards um, a good level, um, which enables us to deliver a continuous quality service to young people. Um, I think we won't drop, I don't expect we will drop below the target membership. You know, others have achieved the target membership in their first year and then come below and taken a while to come back up. Um, I don't think we're going to be dropping below that. So there is a lot of uh, proactive work going to look at that um, and looking at re-engagement and looking at the reasons for that. Um, you know, some of that is transport, um, so there's lots of different reasons and we now have the resource and the capacity to address that and are doing that. And you know, I'm not going to lie and say the numbers won't drop after a year because they will. Um, okay. Is that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Mike Sullivan and Phil Brightmore both wanted to ask a question. Do you want to ask both of them and then... Um, well, I'll, I'll... Thank you, Chair. This is a tremendous success story. It, it's, it's fantastic what you're doing down there. Um, and it's to be commended. On the um, cost of travel, we as a local authority worked hard with Mersey Travel to get a reduced fare, particularly in relation to the Hive. And if my memory served me correctly, um, we got a concessionary fare for under 19s. Um, and it's very, very reasonable. But if you can work with Mersey Travel to get that even reduced, because, you know, since deregulation, as a local authority, we've got very little input into the, into the buses, as opposed to down in London, where it is, it is a, a transport system which is in the, in the confines of local government. Um, and I would hope that will, that will come to pass with the Metro Mayor. But we have worked hard to bring fares down. But my question is, when it was David who raised, who raised the question about lack of participation from, from our areas here, Wirral West, and my own take on it is, as parents, and we've got a lot of parents and grandparents from this area sitting in this room, there's a perception of our children and our grandchildren from this area and parts of Wirral South, I might add as well, going into Birkenhead and mixing with the people from, from around those areas. So that's something that we've all got to work hard at to break down so that we can feel confident as parents and grandparents um, that our children and our grandchildren will be safe. So you've got to work with the police to, so that we'll feel safe that our children and grandchildren will be getting on the bus 
going down there to Birkenhead till 9, 10 o'clock at night and then safely getting on the bus and coming home. So that's that's really my, my yeah. contribution, I think. Yeah, I'm going to take that on board. Um, and I think there's two parts. There's the safety within the youth zone and the safety outside. Um, you know, within the youth zone, we've got very, very clear behaviour policy and expectation, which is rig rigorously enforced. You know, so if young people step over the line after they've had a warning, they will be given a cooling off. That might be one day, one week, three weeks, depending upon the severity of that. Parents will be informed. You know, they will walk out the building and they'll shout at you and tell you that they never want to come again and all that. But two days later, they're stood at the door begging to have it um, rescinded. Um, so we're very clear on that. Different groups of young people mix really well. You know, the first, first people in every evening at quarter past four are pupils from Birkenhead School and Birkenhead Park School. Um, and once they're through the door, they, they mix, dependent upon what, act, what activities they want to be part of. Um, in terms of the behaviour outside, you know, obviously we can't be responsible for <laughs> all behaviour that's happening outside in Birkenhead. But we do work very closely with the police. As I say, pre-opening, we developed a strategy with themselves and McDonald's that are just on the junction opposite to work closely together. Um, I think I mentioned about going to the Home Office a couple of weeks ago and I went with our, our local police sergeant and I presented in terms of the, the, the offer of the youth zone and she presented in terms of the perception of the police. Um, and she said, you know, when she first heard the youth zone was coming, she was not happy. All these extra young people coming onto her patch. Um, and she presented a slide of her expectations against the, re the reality. Um, and she said, since we've opened, there has not been one incident of antisocial behaviour involving young people going to or from the bus and train station. Um, have you got so a chess club? We do have chess. We don't have a particular club, but we, no, but we have chess. it in the That's central area. Yeah. Um, you know, we, this, this is actually one of the biggest things that we've come up against in um, West Wirral and part of South Wirral because we've gone and done pop-ups in supermarkets and all sorts um, you, know, you know, to try and promote that you know, even if young people want to join and come once a month you know, if, for example, if the, the climbing is their thing or they want to learn climbing you know, we've got a climbing wall with three qualified climbing instructors 50 pence otherwise you've got to go to Liverpool to Awesome Walls and pay £8.50 plus the travel, plus the tunnel fare. So in terms of, you know, for, for parents, it is incredible value for money. Um, but the biggest feedback we've had talking to parents is, you're in Birkenhead. Yeah. You know, so what we, you know, what we might want to do is, you know, maybe work with yourselves as elected members and yeah. say, right, well, let's put on a taster session. Yeah. Let's put a little bit of money from somewhere. Let's get two coaches and let's bring a taster session. So for example, on a Saturday, we do juniors from 10 till 12, and we do seniors from four to 10 till two, and then seniors from four till 10. So we've got a two hour gap in the middle between our juniors and seniors. So let's do a taster session that's just for you. And your families or your young people come in, meet the team, see what it's like, ask the questions, um, and take it from there. So, you know, we're really open to those sort of things um, and making that, that can happen, so. Yeah. Chair, I'm, I'm mindful of short on time, so I'll be very quick. Okay, um, we just haven't got long yet. Yeah, um, it's brilliant. I think it's proved it's worth already. It's a huge investment by the council, so I'm pleased to see it's working well. Just, uh, you sell yourself short a little bit. I know some social enterprises have used your building too. I've volunteered there a few times, not least for feeding Birkenhead, and I know this girl can.